Father, we just want to thank you for, for life. We want to thank you for letting us see another day that you have made. Because you have made this day, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for this service. Father, we thank you for what you're about to do in this service. Father, we're asking you to have your way in this service. Father, there's some hearts that need to be changed right now in the name of Jesus. Father, whether they're here in the assembly or whether they're looking at, looking at this online, Father, there are some hearts that need to be changed. Father, we thank you for doing everything that you have set up to do. Father, you said that there is no word that can come from your mouth and come back to you void. So, Father, we thank you for your word. Doing what you have set it out to do. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Father, we thank you for invading our hearts on today. Father, we need a Holy Ghost invasion on today. Father, invade my heart right now. In the name of Jesus. Father, invade the minds of in the heart of those that are sick right now in the name of Jesus Father there's somebody laying down on their back and can't get up Father we thank you for healing them now in the name of Jesus Father you said your word and we stand on your word in the name of Jesus unmovable in your word Yea, though the enemy comes to sway us from left to right, Father, we are standing unmovable on your word. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we pray for the children in the assembly. Father, we pray for their minds right now. Father, I speak a Holy Spirit protection over the minds of our youth on today. Father, we, the enemy cannot have our children. Will not in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for doing that. I thank you for being over your woman servant on today. As she delivers the word. Father, we thank you for her doing it with power and efficiency. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for strongholds being torn down. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for hearts and minds being turned back to you. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for divine revelation coming down on today. In the name of your Jesus. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Father, this is your service, not ours. Yes, Lord. Father, we want you to get the glory. Yes. Because you alone deserve it. All the glory belongs to you, Lord. All the glory. Let no man glory in your presence. Father, you deserve the glory. Every good thing that we do, Lord, you deserve the glory. Every prayer that we say that comes forth, Father, you deserve the glory. Father, when we pray for the sick and they heal, Father, you get the glory. Father, when we pray for those that are going through darkness and they're delivered, Lord, you get the glory. Father, we love you in the story. Father, that's why we're here. Because we love you. Thank you for teaching us how to love. Yes, yes. Father, if it wasn't for your love, we wouldn't know how to love one another. Yes, yes. So, Father, we thank you. We praise you and we love you. It's in the matchless and powerful name of your son, Jesus yes, the Christ, we pray. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Our scripture will be coming from John 15, yes. verses 7 through 13. Yes, 
Verse 7 reads, if you remain in me, mm. and my words remain in you, Come on. ask whatever you wish, uh -huh. and it will be done for you. Yes. This is to my Father's glory, that you may bear much fruit, yeah. showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Uh -huh. Now remain in my love. Yeah. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. Uh -huh. Verse 11, I have told you this so that, you, that my joy may be complete in you and that your joy may be in you. Yes. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Verse 13, greater love has no, uh, no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. John 15, verses 7 through 13. Amen. Bless you. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, Father. Yes, yes. Amen, amen. Yes, bless the Lord. Glory to God. Let's give God a hand. Praise for the word. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I know the translation said hallelujah. If you abide in me and I abide in you, anything you ask in my name, I will do it. So the key to it is you got to live. Let God live in you. And you live in him. And whatever you ask is nothing impossible or too hard that my God cannot do. Glory to God. Then he went on to say that you must love each one another. And he has loved us today. Perfect love that you have. No man can lay down in life for the Lord for far free. Praise God. So God wants us, praise God, abide, hallelujah, in him. He abides in us. Say whatever we ask. Uh, there's nothing too hard. There's nothing impossible God will not do for you. People of God, if you believe what the word said that they praise God. Hallelujah. Your faith can move mountains. Just as I said earlier, praise God. The faith that you have in God's word, praise God, will let you know that God will do what you ask. Thank you, Lord. Thank but the key to it, praise God, is to live the life. Yes. We cannot be our place in God. We cannot walk dishonorably before God yes. and not do the will of God and not please God and expect God to do what we ask Him to do. Yes. And it's time for a change. Yes. It's time to say, Lord, I want more of you than yes. less of me. God, I want to see your glory. Yes. God, when I look in the mirror, I want to see you. God, I want you to destroy everything, God, in my life that's not you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Sin got to die and Holy Ghost take his place. Sin got to leave and Holy Ghost take his place. Yeah. Glory to God. Every spirit, hallelujah. That's not of God, hallelujah. We cancel it right now. Yes. Glory to God, hallelujah. Yes. God knows yes. his word. Yes. The keys abide. Right. Abide yes. in me, God. Yes. Live in me, yes. remain in me, yes. stay in me. Dwell within me, God. Yeah. Have your way in me, God. Yeah. Anything in this heart, God, that's not right. Yeah. Cast it out in the name of Jesus. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. I want to see you, God. Yeah. I want to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Yeah. So God, abide in me. Yeah. Abide in me, God. And let me abide in you, yeah. God. Yeah. That I may yeah. see the glory. That I may see the goodness. Yeah. That I may have the victory. Praise yeah. God. God is looking for obedient people, praise God. Yes, and this is where it's at in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes. We praise God for that word. And the other thing is for us to love. Yes, yes. Love. God is love and he loves us unconditionally today, yes. praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. He has a perfect love for us. Even when we are out of place. Yes. Even when we were faithful, he was still faithful. Yes. When we were faithless, he was still faithful, praise God. Yes. So he loves us today. He wants us to know, praise God. I've got great things for you people. Oh, yeah. Just let me dwell in you. Let me clean your heart up. Let me clean your way from sin. Let me wash you in my blood. Let me make a hole in you. Let me be a clean you. Let me have my way through you, God. God wants you to know, hallelujah, I love you so much that I gave my only son for you. That all oh God, who's ever believe in him, will not perish, but have everlasting life. I praise God today. Thank God, praise God, for the reading of the word. Thank God for the prayer, praise God. And we're going to call the worship team, praise God. Keep that same heart, mind, heart, mindset, and worship God in spirit and the truth. He loves us today. Let God abide in you and you abide in him. Let the love of God begin to demonstrate throughout the world who Jesus is. You are representative of the gospel. 
You are ambassadors for the gospel. You, and show God how much you love him today by letting him abide in you and you abide in him in Jesus' name. Come on, worship team. Amen.
Move me all the way down so that they can see more of you, God. Move me all the way out, oh God, so that they can hear more of you, oh God. More of you, oh God.
just think about God, love God more than anything. More than your house, more than your car, more than your mama. Amen. Hallelujah. More than your spouse, God. More than your children. You gotta put God first. Amen.
sing. Come on. Lord, I love you. James says, eyes have not seen, mm -hmm. 
ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men, the things that God has prepared for us. My God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. It's, going it's going to happen. That neighbor didn't catch it. Maybe you need to turn to another neighbor and tell them, neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Amen. <laughs> Come on, come on. Look look at somebody across the room and shout at them and say, neighbor, neighbor. it's going to happen. It's going to happen. So, somebody said it in the mic. Okay, well, that's good right there. It's going to happen. Amen. Eyes have not seen. Amen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for you. I want to encourage your hearts this morning and tell you, Brother Julian, that the Lord is preparing some stuff for you. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. I tell you to encourage yourself and say, God's got some things prepared for me. Hallelujah. He's got some things prepared for me, little Terry, little John. Amen. He's got some things prepared for me. And, uh, Nobody can comprehend it. Amen. Some things the prophet will never be able to speak on it because not even they know the things, yes. the, the depthness of the things that God has laid up. Come on, that heaven has already put on assignment for you. Yes. Amen. And, and the thing about the promises of God is it seems delayed, but it's never denied. Y'all don't hear me in this place. Glory be to God. It may be delayed, but it's definitely not denied. Can you go with him? Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. It may seem like it's taking a long time. It may seem like the promises that God gave you 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Some of us are still waiting on it to come to pass, but it's going to happen. It's, it's going to happen, and the enemy plays with time, but see, God stepped out of time and created time. Come on, for you and I. So the things that God has promised you, I don't care how long ago he said it. You may have forgotten. The prophet that told you he said it may have forgotten, but God did not forget. Amen. And it is going to happen. Every promise that he made, every word that he spoke over your life, every word that he spoke over your children's life, I don't care how much they act up. I don't care how much it seems like they're going astray. Because God said it, he has to fulfill it. Because he spoke it, he has to bring it to pass. Yes, says that he has some things prepared for us yes, he does. focused on the word prepared and I thought about me and uh, Sister Kim's favorite holiday it's just me, hers and Evangelist right? don't belong to nobody else Christmas we, 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 we want to put up the tree right now Sister Betty as soon as I get home I want to put up my tree and turn on my Christmas music but I'm going to wait until the day before Thanksgiving like I do every year but it don't mean I don't want to do it but in my mind, Teacher Louie, I'm already saying where I'm going to put the lights. Where you two? She got five. Where I'm going to put the new Santa Claus that I just bought from Hobby Lobby. Amen. What I'm going to have on the menu. Can I talk for a minute? Because I'm preparing. You know, what colors I might change or what I might do differently. Because I'm preparing. And in my mind, as I'm preparing, I'm not just seeing the decorations and the food, but I'm seeing the family gathered around laughing and talking. And I already know who's going to be early, and I already know who's going to be late. Can I, can I talk to you for a minute about preparation? And already know the looks on the children's faces when they get that gift, or the husband's face when he gets that thing that he asked for two years ago, but he forgot that he asked, but I gave it. Already in, in, in preparation, this is what you do. And, and, and just like we prepare for our natural families, the Father has already prepared things for you. Come on. He, he wants to give you Christmas every day of the year. Y'all don't hear me. Come on. He never wants you to be in lack. He never wants you crying tears of sorrow. Come on. He always wants you to be joyful. Hallelujah. But when life happens, tell somebody when life happens. 
happens. When life happens, we tend to forget that God is still God. We tend to forget the promise that he made. Come on, we come here every Sunday. April's going to be two years, and some of us may be getting a little weary, but don't grow weary and doing good. Come on. It's going to happen. The building has to come because he said it. Amen. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses shall it be established. And he said it out of more than two or three witnesses. So it has to happen. Come on. It has to come to pass. And so he's preparing some things for us. Amen. And some things that the Father has prepared for us, we haven't received it yet because we're not ready. Can I talk for Amen. a minute? Amen. We're not ready. We're not ready. We're not ready. See, this part of the message y'all might not say amen to too much because we're praying for the building, but we 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 showing up late here. Come on, we we praying for the building, but we not tithing right here. We we praying for the building, but we not giving like we should here. We we not faithful here, but we praying for God to open that door. Tell somebody that door. Come on. That you, door. You, you, you can't pray for a new job when you're not faithful to the one you own. Yeah. Can, I, can I preach for two seconds? Come yeah. on. You you show up to this job late every morning, but then you're mad because they won't give you the promotion. You Am I talking good, teacher? Come on. Amen. And so he has some things prepared for us, but in order to receive it, tell somebody you've got to do the work. You've got, you've got to do the work. And, and we sit back and we see people around us getting things and, and, and doing things. And we're saying, but Lord, what about me? Oh, come on, come on. And I'm by myself. Okay, I'll just talk, turn to the wall and pretend there's a mirror there and preach to me. I, but Lord, what about me? I'm living all I know how to live and doing all I know how to do. And I'm fasting and I'm praying and I'm I'm praying for people when I need somebody to pray for me. And I'm, I'm encouraging somebody else when I need to be encouraged. Come on. I'm wiping somebody else's tears while tears are falling from my eyes. Y'all don't hear me in here. And, and, and God just wants to remind you this morning that in spite of all of that, I've got something prepared for you. Come on. Yeah. Yeah doesn't matter what it looks like. The enemy wants to make you see defeat. He he wants to make you feel defeated. He wants to make you feel like it, it's never going to happen. Maybe the prophet didn't hear God. Maybe maybe God didn't say it after all, after all, but the devil is a liar and he is the father of lies. Come on in here. Glory be to God. God is not a man that he should lie. Didn't we read it last week? Neither is he the son of man that he should repent because he said it. He has to make it good. Yes. Turn with me in your Bibles to Isaiah 64. Isaiah 64. You see, Old Testament is foundation. New Testament is enlightenment. Isaiah 64 and 3 says, When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down the mountains quaked at your presence. I'll read that again. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. Verse 4, from of old, no one has heard. Meaning from the beginning of time, no one has heard or perceived by the air. No eye has seen a God besides you who acts for those who wait for him. This is the foundation of 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. Eyes have not seen. Yes. Ears have not heard. Uh -huh. I hear you, serenity. Neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for you. Have you ever seen somebody get up and say, oh, God did such and such for me, and I didn't even know that he was going to do that? Come on. I got something recently that I paid for something recently and I was telling Sister Kay and Sister Kim when they saw it, I said, I was expecting this, but I didn't know he was going to do all of that. Come on. God is the God of the all of that. Come on. He'll give you the surplus. He'll give you the overflow. Don't you understand that you are a royal priesthood? You are a chosen generation. You are peculiar people. We're not weird people. We are peculiar people. We're not strange people. We are peculiar people. It means we're different. Different. We're set apart. We're sanctified. Come on. Glory be to God. The things that he has prepared for you. No one is smart enough to see it before it happens. Glory be to God. And he says, you did awesome things that we did not look for. God is going to do some things for you that you were not expecting him to do. 
And, and you say, why, preacher? That's because the enemy has traps that you don't know about. And that's why you get things that he, am I talking good? That he, that he, you wasn't expecting him to break through, that you wasn't expecting him to work out. But tell somebody, but it's going to happen. But it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Yes, it will. It's going to happen. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Come on. Come on. He says, for I know the plans that I have for you. Yes. See, they may not know, but he knows. He already knows. Because it just told us, Corinthians, you, you hear this, right? He just told us in verse, Corinthians, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, hadn't entered into the hearts of men. But Jeremiah says, but he says, I know. I know the thoughts that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you call, then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Come on. And we love this scripture. This is the scripture that our feet get light. We want to dance all night long. But the preach of this scripture is not for everybody. You better say that. This scripture is for the remnant of people. Who are living upright. That's it. Who are living holy. Who are faithful. Mm -hmm. Who are obedient to God's word. Then he says. Well, I, know the, I know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you. Because mm -hmm. yes, yes. see prior to this. He told them. He said don't worry about what's going on down the street. You go and build your houses. And plant your fruits. And your vegetables. And have your children. And live your abundant life. And then he says, well, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of good and not of evil. Yes. Why did he say thoughts of good and not of evil? Because there's people who say that they love you, but their thoughts towards you are not good. That's real. Their thoughts towards you are evil. Right. And just because folk rub shoulders with you and say, I love you and, mm -hmm. right. and God bless you don't mean that they really mean it. We talked about Balaam and Bal Balak last week. Come on. Because they come in the house with you. Don't mean that they really there with you. Don't mean that they really there for you. You see, you see Sister Sandy, he says, but I know the thoughts. I know. Let's move. I'm almost finished. Y'all better get with me. I'm almost done. Joshua, chapter 1. Joshua, chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua's hiding from me. Joshua chapter 1, verses 5 through 9. And it says, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. I don't care what they do. What did we talk about last week with Balaam? Balaam was the international warlock. Come on. I don't care what they try to work against you. I don't care what they try to stop. He says right here, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, pastor, so I will be with you. I will not what? Leave you. Neither will I forsake you. Amen. Be strong and courageous. For you shall cause this people to inherit the land I swore to their fathers to give them. There's some blessings that's coming to folk that they won't be able to get from nobody else. It's going to have to come from you. That's why you got to be careful how you handle people. Because the one you talking about and you trying to be funny with, their blessings just might be in your hand. Their blessing just might be in your hand. That's why he told us, be careful how you entertain strangers. Because they may be an angel unaware. But can I help you, Sister Michelle? I'm a, a stranger. Sister Betty may not be someone that you never met before. God is revelating this word right here. You hear me? Evangelist Wright can be a stranger to me in this situation. Come on. You walk by people thinking, oh, Sister Sandy, she ain't nothing she can do for me. You don't know what she can do for you in that situation. 
situation. Right. You see, she's a stranger to you right. there. You you know her where she worked. You know her at True Life. You, you know her where she lived, but you don't know her in, in this arena. You don't know that she has this capability. So in that case, she becomes a stranger to you. Are, are you getting it now? Amen. So that's why he says, be careful how you entertain strangers. They're not going to show up with wings with a halo on their head. They might be dirty sitting on the side of the road in downtown Charleston shaking a cup for some change. You, you don't know who you're entertaining. The lady behind the Walmart counter, come on, might be your angel unaware. The lady at the gas station might be your angel unaware. You've got to be careful how you handle folk. And church folk can be some of the most sedity, bougie, acting, judgmental, nose up in the air folk you ever want to come in contact with. Listen, give me the hood girl off the street. Come on with the earring in her nose and the blue and purple hair and fingernails as long and curved over with the ripped jeans. Because I'm telling you, who she is, you going to see it. You don't have to question it. Amen. You don't have to worry about it. Come on, what she look like can change later or it don't have to. That's between her and God. Man look at the outward appearance. God judges the heart. And then he told us to dress in modest apparel. But you don't know what's going on in her life. So don't judge. Just let God do what he need to do. But be careful how you entertain strength. Amen. Amen. Because they may be an angel unaware. Amen. I told my husband, I said, one Sunday... If Pastor allows, one fifth Sunday, we're going to take a field trip. True Light going to take a field trip. If we can get y'all to just come, we're going to take a field trip. We went to this church outside of this area. And when we pulled up on the street, Sister Betty, we hadn't even gotten into the parking lot. They were out there yelling and jumping, hey, welcome to such and such church. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. And we pulled into the parking lot. Are you a first time visitor? And we said, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they said, park right here, park right here. They had us park in the front. They ran over to the car and they're opening the doors. Come on in, we welcome you. We welcome. And then they giving us bracelets. You're a first time visitor. Come on, sit right here. And nobody looked like us. Wow. They had on hoodies and baseball caps. Come on. And Timberland boots. Come on, come on. The pastor's wife had earrings so big, my, my big arm, the top part of my arm would still be loose in it. I mean, earrings just big. Half the head shaved, half of it hanging. And when I tell you God was in that place, Amen. He was there. Yes, yes, yes. They were strangers to me. They didn't give me any money. I didn't get the key to a new car or a new house. But when I tell you, I left there rich. Charleston got to get out of this churchy, traditional mentality, this religious spirit. Oh, y'all don't want me to talk in here today. Come on, because you're going to miss God looking at what folk got on. You're going to miss God judging how they come through the door. Just like you want to you wanna clean the fish and then they haven't even walked through the door yet. Can you just get them in? Tell somebody, just get them in here. We, we want them to fill the house, but when they come in, how do we treat them when they walk through the door? Do, do we make them want to come? He said it's going to happen, but you got to do your part. Yes, sir. We got to do our part. We're so judgy. Tell them that lay on your neighbor and say, stop being so judgy. Because see, you're looking at folk, what, they, what, they, what their outward problem is, but what about your internal stuff? Yes. What about what's going on in your head that you think nobody can see? Amen. What about what's going on in your mind, in your heart that you think nobody don't know? Come on. David said, Lord, heal me from my secret sins. We, we want to talk about people's facial expressions and, and how they look this way and how they do this this way. But <laughs> Come on. <laughs> There's some things that God has for other people that can only come through you. Amen. Jesus. Amen. And there's some things that you need from people that can only come through that person. Right. Yes. Right. So you got to be careful how you handle them. You can leave and go to another church today or tomorrow. You can leave right now. But there's some things that you won't get from no other leader than you get from Pastor Wright. Amen. 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 
Amen. That you'll get from Evangelist, that you'll get from Minister Carpenter, from Teacher Louie, from myself. There's some things that only certain people can give to you. Amen. I heard a preacher say something yesterday on the radio, and it, it blew my mind. He said, just do your best. That's it. And even if, if, if Sister Kay and I are both trying to sing the same song, and she sounds better than me, or I sound better than her, it really doesn't matter that's who that's sounds that's better than who. That's what matters is that's the effect of the song. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. If she reaches 1,000, but I reach one, the effect was still the same. Because whomever God attended for the anointing to reach, that's all that matters. But see, we have such a competitive spirit. We, nobody wants to do what they were called to do. Everybody wants to tiptoe over into somebody else's assignment. Tell somebody, just do what he told you to do. If we would all do what he told us to do, we would get up out of here next week. Oh, I ain't get too many amens right there. Amen. If we would all fulfill our assignment, right. we'd be out of here next week. Amen. But everybody wants to do somebody else's job. If I got on this keyboard, y'all gonna run out of here. Because oh that's not gonna work for me. Right. Just do your job. If y'all put me at the door, y'all gonna be going to pastor saying, Pastor, no. Elsa done snatched the fan out of my hand. Elsa done told me to sit in the back and I'm supposed to be in the front. I'm going to have y'all all over them because that's not my assignment, y'all. Amen. All right. He, he says, only, verse 7, only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Just do what your leaders tell you to do. He said, do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. When you walk in obedience mm -hmm. to the word of God, when you walk in obedience to your leaders, come on, you'll have success wherever you go. Come on, you'll have success in the projects or you'll have success in the suburbs. Wherever you go, come on, tell somebody, I'll be successful. Be uh -huh. He says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Come on, true light, this is our scripture. But you shall meditate on it when? Yeah. Day and night. That means you shall think about it day and night. That doesn't mean just at 8 a.m. and at 8 p.m. That means all day you are to meditate on the word of God. Prove it, preacher. Say, prove it, preacher. Because he told me he would keep me in perfect peace. If I keep my mind stay, not not part time, not twice a day. Come on, the enemy goes to him twice a day. You can do more than that. Come on, all day long, I have to meditate on him. Glory be to God. Day and night, you shall meditate, mutter, mutter, mentally imagine on the word of God day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. So we want all of the blessings of God. Right. But we don't want to do all that he said. Right. We want to pick and choose what we're going to follow. We want to pick and choose how we're going to live. We want to pick and choose what we're going to be obedient to. Well, I'll listen to this part, but I'm not going to do all that now. Am I in the right house? Am Amen. I talking to yes. the right yes. church? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. He says, do all of these things, then you'll be prosperous and have good success. He says in verse 9, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Now, after all these good promises, why did he say be strong and courageous and do not be frightened or dismayed? Because he understood, Sister Cherie, that in spite of the promises that he made, he knows that the enemy is coming to try to snatch them. He knows that the enemy wants to cause you to lose your faith in God. And Psalm says, I don't want to lose my faith in God. I don't want, because if I lose my faith, who's going to help me? 
who's going to help me to run this if I lose my faith I lose everything come on and you can have the house but let me keep my faith you you can have the car but let me keep my faith you can have the relationships but let me keep my faith my faith is all I've got come on I don't care how much money I got in the bank my faith is all I have you don't understand my faith is what keeps me sane my, my faith keeps me from pulling my hair out strand by strand my faith is what keeps me from starting my car and driving and not stopping and y'all never see me again it's my faith it's knowing that in spite of what things look like right now it's going to get better come on that's what my faith says my faith says I know the bill's not paid today but hold on until tomorrow and I know they're acting up right now but hold on for another five minutes come on I know they haven't walked through the door yet but hold on for, for one more hour it's going to happen things are going to get better you may not see it I may not see it they may not see it but he said I have not seen it have not heard neither has it into, into, into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for you Prepare it for me. What he prepared for you is not my business. But he got some things prepared for me. Come on, my bank account is prepared. Where I see it at, he's already lined it up. The house that I want, yeah, Elsie, you got a house here, but there's another one. He's already prepared. The car that I want, Elsie, you got a car, yeah, but there's another one. He's already prepared. The job that I want, but Elsie, you got one. Uh, there's another, tell somebody, but there's another one. He's preparing things for you, but you're sitting there comfortable in what you got. How I don't, I don't, I don't want, I, you know, y'all can have the positions on the job. I don't want to be nobody manager. And I'm just comfortable right here where I'm at. Come on. And that's why you had to move. And you complaining every day. I'm so tired of this job. I don't want to be here on this job. And God's saying, I got, a, I got an office with a view, with a window, where nobody's going to be bothering you. And you don't have to work so hard. But you said, tell somebody you said what you didn't want. Stop telling God what you don't want. If you knew what he had prepared for you, your mouth would be shut and then you'd really say, not my will, Lord, but your will be done. But see, we can't say that because we don't trust his will. Y'all don't want to hear y'all don't want me to talk. We don't trust his will. That's why we don't pray that prayer. Some of us, we can't even release our children to God's will because we're holding on to our holding on to our will. But when we say, Lord, that if that's your child right there, you deal with him, you got to mean that thing. And however he sees fit to deal with him, let him deal with it. Y'all don't help me. He'll deal with them the way that he can. He'll reach them the way that he can. You trying to reach him, but your arms are too short. Come on, Isaiah. He said, God's arms are not too short. Maybe he'll take his shepherd hook and he'll pull him right back in. He'll snatch him right back in. Put them right back in place. Because he knows what he has prepared for them. He knows what he has prepared for you. We too busy trying to be gone. We too busy trying to be God. We want to fix everything. I talked with a young lady yesterday in the salon about being the oldest child and the responsibilities of the oldest child. And, and she's the oldest too. And I said, we always want to fix stuff, don't we? You know, and then the hardest thing for me when, when, we, when we lost my brother was I wasn't able to fix them. That's it. That's it. That was the hardest thing. Because I'm the one, when things go wrong, that they call Mel, call Shonda. Shonda acting up. Mel, call Carly. Because Carly acting up. Mel, call Junior. Because it's a Amen. But I didn't have nobody to call for that. I, I couldn't reach in their heart and turn off the pain. I, could, I couldn't fix it. And I would tell my husband all the time, I, I'm upset because I can't fix this. This one is beyond me. But honey, it may be beyond you, but it's not beyond God. It's not beyond him. The things we go through, we don't know why we go through it. But I'm telling you that there's greater on the other side of this. There is better on the other side of this. It won't be like this always. God is going to perfect that thing concerning you. You can't talk to nobody about healing if you've never been sick. You can't talk to nobody about riches if you've never been broke. You can't talk to nobody about marriage if your heart never been hurt. You can't talk to nobody about children if you never raised it. But when you've been through something, 
when you've been through something. That's why I tell folk before I got remarried and I was divorced, don't tell me I can't talk to you about marriage. Because I know how it works and I know how it fails. I can tell you both sides of the coin, baby. I can give you the good and the bad. I can give you the ups and the downs. But God has something prepared for you. He gets excited about giving it to you. I'm that type of person. I told Sister K once, I think it was last year when I bought her a birthday gift. I said, I'm so excited to give you your gift. I want to tell you what it is now. Can I tell you? Can I tell you? She said, no, you got to wait and give it to me on Sunday. And I said, but I want to tell you now. Because when you get excited and you're a giver, you want to share. Heaven is just sitting on the edge of the seat like, Lord, can we just give her a glimpse? Can we just show her what you got right around the corner? Come on, God's got a gift for you. And you don't have to wait until December 25th. That's man's day. Come on, he wants to give it to you now. Now faith is the substance. That means it's tangible. The tangible blessing of God. Of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You may not see but you better believe that it's on the way. It's going to happen. Peter was locked up in that jail and wrote in the disciples were in the house praying. Glory be to God. I'm sure somebody had made some cornbread and some collard greens with some good old ham hock and neck bones in it. Or for those who don't eat pork, they had some smoked turkey. I'm sure they was eating real good. And they was praying and talking about good times with Peter. And maybe and hopefully they'll release him within 30 days. Hopefully it'll be a year when he get out. And while they were praying, glory be to God, somebody was knocking on the door. Glory be to God, somebody was knocking on the door. And Rhoda went and opened the door, looked Peter in the face and closed the door. When your blessing knocks on your door, don't close the door on it. Glory be to God. I sit in expectation. Hallelujah. I check my mailbox every day. Bills, bills, bills. I'm looking for checks. Y'all don't have me. When I walk around the parking lot, my head is down like this. I'm looking for money. Because he said the wealth would be laid up for me. So I'm looking for where it's laid up at. Come on. Because he said, it, she said it's manifested now. So I'm looking for the manifestation. You don't know, help me. When I go to the doctor, I walk in smiling. I ain't scared of what you got to tell me. Because the Lord is on my side. What can men do unto me? So I walk in with good news. And I walk out with good news. I walk in Blessing. The problem 
bit. So many of us have been blessed, but we want to keep it to ourselves. And he told us in Joshua, he said, these things that the land that I want these people to inherit, it's going to come through you. Some of us have not gotten out millions yet because we already said, I ain't giving John Singleton nothing. I ain't giving April a dollar. And that's why you haven't gotten your dollar. Y'all making me scratch my head. Proverbs said, trust in the Lord with all your heart, all your money. We want to trust him with everything except our money. But see, your money is connected to your heart. <laughs> He says, money answereth all things. But he says, the blessings of the Lord make you rich and add no sorrow. So maybe if he's able, able to give me that million, he can give me another. He can give me another. Because the houses and the cattle on a thousand hills, they don't belong to man, they belong to God. He's prepared. I tell you to say it's going to happen. He's, am I preaching good, Sean? He's preparing something for me. Go with me to Romans 8.28 and I'm going to let y'all get out of here. Romans 8.28. Romans 8.28. Romans 8.28. Romans 8.28. What does it say? What does it say, Antonio? Okay, come on. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And we know. I might not be smart in everything. You give me some math and we both going to fail. But this one thing I do know. For we all know that all things, all of it, Bernard, all things, the good, the bad, and the ugly, all things, when it hurts me, when it breaks my heart, when I cry all night long, all things, when I lost my job, Tala, all things, when my car broke down, all things, for my husband not acting right. My wife not acting right. My children acting crazy. All things work together for the good. Come on, what are you saying, Jeremiah? I know the thoughts. Come on. For the good of them who what? Love God. That means your obedience to God. That means you follow after his decrees and his laws. And are called according to his purpose. Called according to his purpose. So that means if I can be called according to God's purpose, then I can be called according to the enemy's purpose. Amen. Tell somebody you better make sure God's calling you. Because you'll hear your name. You hear your name in the wind. You've got to make sure that the right wind is calling you. You've got to make sure that it's Yahweh, the sovereign Lord, come on, that's upon you because he has anointed you to preach the gospel to the poor. You've got to make sure that the assignment that you're receiving, that it comes from God because he has something prepared for you that nobody else knows about. And guess what? Satan has some stuff prepared for you too. You've got to walk the right path. Come on. And there's not a lot of people on that path. Young people, you can't follow the road that's popular. Amen. Say so. Because it's popular doesn't mean it's profitable. Come on. You've got to follow the straight and the narrow. You've got to follow the road, glory be to God, that's going to lead you to life and not death. You've got to follow the road that's going to lead you to Jeremiah 29 and 11. For he knows the thoughts that he thinks yeah. towards you. Thoughts of good and not of evil to give you an expected end. Everybody's standing. Amen. It's going to happen. Yes, Lord. It seems so far away, but it's going to happen. Where I am now. In a lot of places, I never would have imagined I would be, but I am. Some of the things that I have, I never would have imagined having, but he gave it to me. Yes. Because he had some things prepared for me. Some of the things he had prepared for me, I didn't know about. Mm. Had no clue about until I got it. And I said, oh. Amen. You could turn that off for me.